friends. I am Miss Jen. I am the minister to children, youth, and families at Trinity Episcopal Church here in the Woodlands, Texas, and I am so glad that you are joining us this morning for Children's Chapel. Let's go ahead and start our time with a song. Are you ready? We're going to do Rise and Shine. Ready? Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, children of the Lord. Excellent job, everybody. Now let's go ahead and look at our cross. We still have the color white on our cross. And if you're watching big church or you're going to church in person you'll notice that the colors that we have on our cross are the same colors that are on the altar during church so look at that and you'll see it's the same because we're right now it's white because we're still in the season of easter good job and now we'll light our candles we'll light our candles to remind us that this is a time to be peaceful Everyone take a deep breath. <sighs> Makes me feel peaceful. And we light our candles to remind us that God is always with us. And you know, when we light candles, it just kind of makes it feel like a special time. Like sometimes when you have a fancy special dinner, you may light candles on the table well, same with this. We light our candles because this is a special time that we have with one another and we have with God. Okay, now we're going to have Garrett lead us in prayers today. Take it away, Garrett. The Lord be with you. And also with you. God be with me when I think. God be with me when I think. God be with me when I speak. God be with me when I speak. God be with me in my heart. God be with me in my heart. Oh dear God, let us never part. Oh dear God, let us never part. We believe in God above. We believe in God above. We believe in Jesus' love. We believe in Jesus' love. We believe in the Spirit too. We believe in the Spirit too. Who comes to tell us what to do. Who comes to tell us what to do. We pray for the leaders and everyone in our church. Jesus, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of our world so we can live in peace. Jesus, hear our prayer. We, we pray for our teachers to help us so we can learn and do be more like you. Jesus, hear our prayer. We pray for our families that your love will fill our hearts. Jesus, hear our prayer. We pray for the boys and girls and their families who are hungry and give thanks for those who help them. Jesus, hear our prayer. We pray for all people who are sick or sad. Jesus, hear our prayer. We pray for all people who have died. Jesus, hear our prayer. We pray you will be with us in all we do. Jesus, hear our prayer. Are there any special prayers today? We ask all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear God, dear God, I am sorry I have done things. I am sorry I have done things I should not have done. I should not have done. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to forgive me for hurting friends and those I love. For hurting friends and those I love. Please help me to do better. Please help me to do better. Thank you, God, for your love. Thank you, God, for your love. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Garrett, for leading our prayers today. Now, today we're going to look in our Bibles in the book of Acts. Acts comes after Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's in the New Testament. And we're going to look at chapter 8 and start on verse 26. Okay, it says, An angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, Go south to the desert road. He said, it's the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So Philip started out. On his way, he met an Ethiopian official. 
the man had an important position in charge of all the wealth of the queen of Ethiopia. So he was a pretty important man. This official had gone to, to Jerusalem to worship. And on his way home, he was sitting in his chariot. Do y'all know what a chariot is? That's what they used to have. They didn't have cars like we have today. So he was in his chariot. He was reading the book of Isaiah, the prophet. The Holy Spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. So Philip ran up to the chariot. He heard the man reading Isaiah, the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading? Philip asked. How can I? He said, I need someone to explain it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. And they read from the book of Isaiah. The official said to Philip, Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? And Philip began with that same part of scripture, and he told him the good news about Jesus. And then it tells us that he went ahead and he baptized the man from Ethiopia. So what's happened in our story? So Philip was told really like by the Holy Spirit, hey, go stand by that road. And so he did, he listened and he followed and he waited and here comes this man from Ethiopia in his chari chariot. And he was reading the Bible. He was reading the book of Isaiah, but he didn't understand it. He needed some help understanding. And lo and behold, Philip was there in the right place at the right time to help him, help him understand and he was able to tell him about Jesus and the good news of Jesus. Now, do you all know where Ethiopia is? So I have my glow. Can y'all see it? So, Ethiopia is right here on the continent of Africa. And Jerusalem is here. So it was quite a ways away. He wasn't in his own neck of the woods. He wasn't in his neighborhood. He was a foreigner, but he had traveled to Jerusalem to worship. Now, he wasn't understanding what he was reading. Have you ever had that problem? Sometimes you're reading and you're like, I don't understand this. I know that's happened to me before. Now, Think about who helps us. Maybe at school, maybe at home. I know when I was young and I had trouble at school, a teacher helped me. Think about the teachers in your life that make a difference, that help you understand things that you may not have understood before. Just like Philip helped the man from Ethiopia, think about the teachers that have helped you. So this is what I want you to do today. We're getting to the end of the school year. I want you to think about your teacher and I want you to go write your teacher a note and say, thank you. Now I have a fun little card. Can y'all see it? And it says, thank you in all different kinds of languages. It says, thank you. It says, grazie. It says, gracias says, danke, says, merci beaucoup. It says, thank you. It's important to say thank you to our teachers. Our teachers are wonderful people. And when you say thank you, you're sharing God's love with them. Okay, let's go ahead and end with a prayer. Father God, thank you for teachers. Thank you for the teachers that help us understand. And we ask that you bless them and keep them. And all of God's children said, Amen. Now thank you for joining me for Children's Chapel. Remember that I love you. Remember that God loves you. And I will see you very soon. Bye everybody.